In today's video, I will show you the best value gaming PC build that you can get right now. We are talking about, in my opinion, the best price to performance gaming desktop that you can get. And if you watch this video until the end, I assure you that you will know why this PC is perfect for you. And don't worry if your budget is lower and you can't afford this PC, because at the end of the video, I will explain on how to make this PC cheaper without losing much performance. And also, if you have more money, I will explain on what things to operate to make it a bit better. So it's really important for you to stay until the end if you want to learn about computers and buy your next PC build. But if you're looking for a private PC and you're not looking to build it by yourself, I completely understand that you will have a private PC at this price point down below in the description as well with a bunch of private PCs and of course this PC build. But you will also have my playlist about PC builds and private PCs in the top right of the screen. With that being said, let's start. Okay, so first we are going to talk about the CPU. I picked the Ryzen 5 56 Sunrise, mainly because for 150 bucks you get a performance that's really similar to the 56 Sunrise X and a bit worse than the i5 12400F. But if you want the 12400F, you will need a motherboard that's more expensive if you want better features, and the CPU itself is going to be more expensive. The 56 Sunrise is a 6 core 12 thread processor, which is the sweet spot for gaming and streaming. So, if you're thinking of gaming and streaming, I think that the 56 Sunrise is your best option in terms of price to performance, and at this price point, will be a great choice. Then, for the CPU cooler, I picked the ID Cooling SE214 XT. This one is an ARGB CPU air cooler, which is going to be more than enough for the 56 Sunrise. Now, you can get away with the stock cooler from AMD. But if you want a more quiet experience and better CPU temps, I think that going with this cheap CPU cooler is going to be a great option for those CPU temps. Then for the motherboard, I picked the Gigabyte B550M Micro ATX motherboard. I think that this one for the price that you pay 90 bucks, you get great features and you get something that's important in my opinion. And that is two M.2 slots for the SSD, meaning that if you want to operate the SSD down the line with an M.2 drive, you will be able to put an extra one. I will explain this in a second. But this motherboard for 90 bucks, great. Then for the memory kit, I picked the Silicon Power X Power 16 gigs of RAM 2x8 at 3200MHz CL16 memory. This is all that we need for gaming, especially for 1080p and 1440p gaming, which is what you're aiming with this PC build. I would even go with a 1440p monitor, but if you want to play at 1080p and achieve higher frame rates, that is completely up to you. Now, if you want to get RGB RAM, I completely understand you're looking to spend an extra 20 bucks here. Then for the storage, I picked the Western Digital Green SN350, 960 gigs of M.2 SSD. 500 gigs will get you started, but if you want to download a bunch of games, and especially if they are heavy, you're looking to get at least a terabyte of SSD or 960 gigs, that doesn't make a huge difference. And for 65 packs, this is actually a great pickup. It's going to be a really fast Gen 3 SSD, fast enough for gaming. You definitely don't need more than this, unless you want to do some professional content creation and you're transferring files all the time. Then for the graphics card, and this is the most important component for gaming, I picked the MSI Radeon RX 6700 XT. This one has 12 gigs of VRAM, which is great for the future when maybe VRAM is going to be more important for gaming. As of right now, 8 gigs of VRAM is the sweet spot, but anyway, here we have 12. And the 6700 XT is a great 1440p GPU, so like I said before, I think that you should buy a 1440p monitor if you don't have one already. Now you have my monitor buyer's guide that you will have in the top right of the screen for you to know how much you should spend on a gaming monitor. I think that it's really important for you to see that if you don't know anything about monitors and you're thinking of buying one. On that video as well, you will have different models in the description that are going to be perfect for your budget. Now, the 6700 XT is really similar to the RTX 3060 Ti from NVIDIA in terms of performance. Yes, on the 3060 Ti you get a better content creation encoder, you get ray tracing, you get DLSS, you get some technologies that might be important for you, but this one is $50 cheaper than the 3060 Ti, or even more because I've seen some Amazon models, the Asus ones, going for around 370 bucks. I will leave both links from the MSI one and the Asus one down below in the description, so you can save a lot of money by going with the Asus one. And don't worry, in terms of performance, you won't notice a difference. But anyway, 430 bucks for a graphics card that's going to be perfect for 1440p. I believe it's a really good choice. And I do believe that if you're thinking of buying right now or waiting, this is a situation where I would buy right now, or maybe 
wait a month maximum because we won't have GPUs like this anytime soon. So unless you want a mid-range to high-end PC build, you should buy right now. Then for the case, I picked the Thermaltake Divider 170TG ARGB. So we have a micro ATX motherboard and a micro ATX case, meaning that this build is going to be smaller than the full ATX form factor. And I believe this is a good thing, especially if you have a small desk. On top of that, this case is cheaper than a fully ATX case. And considering that it has great airflow from mesh panel, it already comes with two RGB fans pre-installed on the front and you have to add one in the back. Don't worry, I picked the ID cooling for the exhaust fan and you will have it in the description so you don't have to search one by yourself. So overall, this case is going to be great for the price and the airflow that you get, which is really important on a gaming PC. Then last but not least, the power supply, I picked the FK G5, 650 watt, 80 plus gold, 75 power supply. This is all that we are going to need for this build. And this is a B tier power supply, really good quality and it won't risk your components. The price is 70 bucks, which is a good price. And I believe this power supply is the right one for this PC build. Now, if you want something more upgradable, you're looking to get a 750 watt or even an 850 watt power supply. I will leave both options if you want something that's more upgradable in the description, but don't pick just any 750 or 850 watt power supply because they might be bad quality. So you definitely don't wanna buy the wrong power supply and you definitely don't want to overspend either so it's really important for you to check the models that i recommend because those are going to be b and a tier so the total price is going to be 944 bucks now it can be even less if the gpu is from asus and it's on a discount because i just checked while recording this video and it's not on a discount anymore last time i made a video it was around 370 bucks or something like that right now it's 430 just like the msi one so I will leave it down below in the description anyway. I think that you should go for the MSI one at the same price. But if you find it on a deal by the time that you see this video, definitely go pick that one up and you end up saving around 40 or 50 bucks, which is actually a good amount of money for a PC build. Now, there are a few things that I will downgrade or upgrade depending on your budget. If you have less than 944 bucks, which is completely understandable, in order for you to get the same performance and a cheaper price, I would downgrade the SSD to 500 gigs and then I would take out the CPU cooler. If you do these two downgrades and you pick the 500 gigs Crucial P2 SSD, the total price will be 900 bucks and the performance is going to remain the same. Now at this point, if you lower the price, you're going to lower the performance. But anyway, if you're going to play, let's say at 1080p and you're not thinking of 1440p or maybe you wanna play at 1440p, but not the most high demanding video games, I do recommend you going for the 6650 XT instead of the 6700 XT. Yes, you lose performance, but if you're just going to play at 1080p, you're not going to notice a difference. And if you're going to play at 1440p, yes, you will notice a difference. But trust me, the 6650 XT is still a really capable GPU when it comes to 1440p gaming. If you do this downgrade, you're looking to spend 759 bucks, which is around 200 dollars cheaper than the main PC build that I mentioned. And here you lose some performance like i've said but the 6650 xt is still a great gpu and you won't regret buying it if you have a budget of 750 bucks this is the minimum that i would go for if you want a great 1080p performance but also a 1440p one but if you want just a 1080p performance you can get away with the 6600 but considering that it's only around 40 dollars cheaper which it's a good amount of money, but with the 6650 XT, you gain a lot of performance over that 66 sandwich. Now, if you got overwhelmed, don't worry about it. Just follow my recommendations when it comes to downgrades and upgrades, and you will be fine. And if you want better performance for a bit more expensive, for 999 bucks, I recommend you upgrading the memory to this team group T-Force RGB 32 gigs of RAM. Now, for gaming, you won't notice a big difference unless you're playing games like Fly Simulator. And even then, on the FPS mark, you won't notice a difference, but the game overall is going to be more steady and you will have less FPS drops. Now, this is not in all games, of course. It really depends on the game. And I'm talking about Fly Simulator, which is a really high demanding video game. But this 32 gigs of RAM kit is going to help you out, especially if you want to do video editing or content creation, or maybe you want to start streaming and having a bunch of tasks opened on the background 
maybe you are the type of dude that opens a lot of tabs as well then it's going to help you out but if you're just going to do gaming i do recommend just sticking with 16 gigs and upgrading the ryzen 5 instead to the 5600x so you gain a bit of extra performance for the same price difference and the total price for that pc will be a thousand dollars as well if you don't end up upgrading the rgb ram with that in mind if you have any question about this pc build or just any pc build or private pc let me know in the comment section i try to reply every single comment as soon as possible so don't hesitate to ask for help if you're searching for your new gaming desktop and please if you found it helpful leave a like and subscribe to help the youtube algorithm and help me grow but most importantly hit that bell button so you get notified when i upload this type of content and when i upload posts to youtube with new pc builds and private pc deals that is really important if you want to keep up to the best prices every single day with that being said thank you guys for watching thank you for the support and i will see you on the next one